Today we're going to be setting up Plex Media Server using Docker on this salvaged and repaired eBay computer now with 23 terabytes of storage. Hi, I'm Kyle and you're watching TechSquid TV. If you don't already know, Plex is an amazing and free software that allows you to easily take a collection of videos, such as movies and TV shows, and host them on your own server to create essentially your own personal Netflix. It'll organize your media, be it TV shows and movies, or music and photos, and make them accessible from anywhere. I've personally started using Plex even for listening to my podcasts as well. And everything we're talking about here is on their free version of the software. They do have a paid version, but I'm not gonna go into that because Plex isn't sponsoring this episode. I just genuinely love the software. Now I know what you're thinking, Kyle. What kind of media do you have on your Plex server? Surely there is only 100% legally sourced material and you are 100% correct. And for the purposes of this video and to make YouTube happy, I thought I would share with you ways that you too can enjoy legally free content. Enjoy. Available now on Plex Media Server, the greatest hit movies ever to be released in the public domain. Publicly available classics such as Charlie Chapman's The Pawn Shop, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Night of the Living Dead, Return of the Kung Fu Dragon, and Teenagers from Outer Space. Call now and get a special bonus. The Creative Commons Pack, featuring Big Buck Bunny. That software again is Plex, P-L-E-X. Download today. Please use Torrance responsibly. That's where the sponsor money goes and it felt necessary. To make your own Plex server, you'll only need just a few things. First and foremost, you will need some kind of computer to act as your server. This could actually be anything from a Raspberry Pi to a cloud-hosted provider. You can actually run Plex Media Server right off your own computer right now by installing the server on your regular old desktop or laptop, but that's not what we're doing. We want our server to always be online and have a ton of storage, which would be too expensive in the cloud. We're taking an old HP small form factor PC filling it with hard drives, installing Docker, Docker Compose, and then we're gonna run Plex on it. If you forgot why Docker is awesome, you should check out our earlier video covering what is Docker in five minutes. I'd also recommend following that up with our Docker Compose tutorial. It's a series. Does this episode make it a, a trilogy? What do you call it? What do you call it when there's a fourth, when there's a fourth episode, it's just a series again, right? All right, let's get started. I bought this computer off eBay about a year ago and I have absolutely never touched it until about last month. At the time it seemed like a pretty good deal and it still seems like it mostly is. I paid $170 total including shipping for this. It's an HP Elite small form factor 8200 with an i7-2600. That i7-2600 is the gold nugget of this build and it's going to give us 4 cores and 8 threads clocked at 3.4 gigahertz, giving us more than enough headroom for plenty of applications to run at once in case we wanted to run more than Plex in the future, and we will. It's also just powerful enough to handle some light stream transcoding. Transcoding could be a whole video on its own, but the short version is, your computer might be able to play that sweet 4K Blu-ray file directly using what's called direct play, but your phone not so much. Because of this, Plex has the ability to transcode or convert the video on the fly to a format that your device can actually handle. The only problem is this takes a fair amount of CPU. So depending on what type of content you have and what clients you use and how many users you have online, your CPU needs may change. If we check the Passmark score for this i7-2600, we see we get a score of 8,191. Plex says that we should be able to do a little bit better than a single 720p transcoded stream at a time. That's good enough to handle all of my home devices, which can mostly use direct play. Plus my phone when I'm out should be able to receive a 720p stream. This is a great use of your old gaming rig when you decide to upgrade next time. Now let's go back to the computer. The computer came with eight gigs of RAM. I found out that one was dead, so I actually replaced it, bringing us back up to the original eight gigabytes of RAM. And I took out the old 300 gig hard drive that it came with. And lastly, we took out the disk drive because we're not going to be using any disk drives. In their place, we have two Western digital drives, a three terabyte and an eight terabyte, as well as one Seagate Exos, 12 terabyte drive. The plan is to have an eight terabyte media drive, a three terabyte personal drive, and then periodically back up these two drives to the 12 terabyte for safekeeping. However, backing up will have to be another video. The data drive will be separate from our operating system, which I'm going to use this solid state because I actually just happen to have it lying around at the moment. Now to install the operating system. Hey, before we install the operating system, I actually found a really cool place to install the server and made a little mini thing about that. So let's just jump over there real quick. I was looking for a place to keep the new server when I noticed that this IKEA nightstand that I had 
happened to have a shelf that was pretty much the exact perfect size. When it was a larger computer that I was using as my server, I had it stored inside the cabinet under my TV. And one thing I noticed was that it got incredibly hot in there, so I wanted to solve two problems. One, make sure there were no wires coming out the front of this thing, and two, see what we could do about improving the cooling, especially since it was going to be in a small form factor PC with a ton more space inside. So I tried measuring this awkwardly. I could have done it with uh, the whole nightstand facing down and done it from the top, but then I wouldn't have been able to get this camera angle. So, so we cut out holes for the fan and IO, and uh, I think I'll just let the quick montage finish up the rest. And that was it for getting the I.O. cut. I had access to power, ethernet, and even a few USB ports. A few days later, I decided how I was going to power on the fan. I had a lot of options, including connecting it right to the motherboard, assuming there were even pins available. But uh, to make everything a little bit more simple and portable and easy to pull out, I decided to uh, buy an adapter that will go straight to USB. So we can just shove the fan in the back and plug into one of the available USB ports. We're not really using them anyway. All right, let's go back to installing Ubuntu on our new server. Now to install the operating system. I will be using Ubuntu 18.04. Feel free to download your favorite Linux distro, though for this tutorial, Debian is preferred if you want to follow along. Download your Linux ISO and write it to a flash drive. If you're on Windows like me, you can use the program etcher.io. Check out our tutorial in the description on using this tool on our blog. Once written, plug the flash drive into your server and start mashing the select boot option key, often F8 or escape. When prompted, select to boot from your USB device and follow the instructions on screen to carefully install your operating system to the correct drive. You'll be asked to enter your new root username and password, as well as fill out several other settings and preferences. Once you've caught up, you'll be at the terminal screen ready to go. There are some steps you should take that are good security practice whenever setting up a new server, but for time's sake, we're not gonna be able to go over that in this tutorial. However, we will have a link down below for anyone who wants to go a little bit further in depth. We wanna install Docker and Docker Compose. Docker is slightly annoying to install because we must first add Docker's repository to your sources list before being able to install Docker Community Edition and the Docker CLI. Once complete, you can verify that Docker was installed by running Docker version. Now, technically this is all you need to get Plex running, but we are going to go one step further and install Docker Compose. If you don't remember why that is better, you should go check out a tutorial that we did on Docker Compose. Docker Compose will allow us to create a script that will define how we want to use multiple containers together. We're almost there. Let's go over one more thing before going on with Docker. We have not talked about our hard drives yet. Unless you plan on storing all of your stuff on the same drive as your operating system, you need to add and mount an additional hard drive unless you want to use cloud storage, but that's not what we're talking about today. We have enough to go over. For the purposes of this video, the only drive I am concerned with is the eight terabyte Western Digital Red Drive for which we'll hold all of our Plex data. First, we create a directory that we want to mount that data at, and we have to tell Linux to link that directory to our data hard drive. My favorite way to find our drive is to use the DF utility with the human readable flag. That will show us all of the available file systems and you can find the correct drive quickly based on its size. Once you have that, mount the drive to the directory we just created and you'll be all set to go. You can double check with the DF utility again to make sure that the drive is mounted where you expected it to be. 
Now, please refer back to the previous segment about acquiring legal and free movies to fill that drive. Of course, you can always rip your own Blu-rays and DVDs. All that's left to do is to write our own Docker Compose script and flip on the on switch. We are using a Docker image from linuxserver.io. Quick shout out to all those folks over there who maintain a large collection of useful Docker images that work to ensure that all images are efficient and secure. On the Docker Hub page for this image, they include an example of the Docker Compose file that we can follow if we choose to. We're gonna copy and paste their example into a blank Docker Compose YAML file. The only part that we need to truly be concerned about is the listed volumes. In the volumes area, change the placeholder values with what we just created to mount our drive and you're all set. If you run into any trouble, you might need to adjust the PUID and GUID values, but we'll leave more about that down below. You probably won't have to worry about it. And that's all. You can save and run the command docker compose up d. From there, you can head on over to your web browser and paste in the local IP address of your server, followed by the port 32400 forward slash web. And there is your own Plex media server. Once you have gone through the quick setup to tell Plex where your TV and movies are, you'll be able to access your library from anywhere on Plex.tv or on your phone or smart TV. All that's left is to fill up your hard drive with media, sit on the couch and enjoy. Thanks for watching everyone. If you made it this far, remember to subscribe and take part in the polls on the community tab to let us know what kind of videos you wanna see next. If you are so inclined, come talk to us on Discord, possibly play a game with us or plan our next project. And with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again next time.